Good morning, Stitchy people. Uh, it is Jesse at Miscellaneous Pages, and welcome back to those of you uh, who have been here before. And if you're brand new, then uh, welcome to my channel. Um, I'm primarily cross stitch and fiber arts and stuff like that, um, but I also do some diamond painting occasionally, um, and I'm trying to do some lives, but scheduling lives has been really difficult for me. So it might end up being some whip and chats at some point in the future. I do now have a camera arm that will let me kind of look down on the diamond painting. So um, I'm kind of working on that kind of stuff. Anyway, welcome um, all my stitchy friends. I'm so happy to have you here and uh, let's get right into this. I have a busy day today. I have a lot of stuff on my to-do list for FlossTube. I have a lot of stuff on my to-do list for life. So <laughs> so let's, uh, let's try to get this started. I actually am getting my car inspected and getting an oil change in less than an hour. So I may have to pause this and come back. And um, you can see, uh, directionally challenged. Okay, you can see in the bottom of the corner here, we've got this little mislaid pages. You can see in the top corner, we've got the stream yard logo because I am actually gonna be doing some screen sharing um, because I find that to be easier than printing off a bunch of pages that um, for you to see some images that I want to share with you. So uh, let's get right into it. That's the intro. Oh, also you may have noticed Again, directionally challenged, I apologize. Um, my little background here is a little bit different. Um, so I may have mentioned in the past, this is not my permanent crafting space. This is the space that I use right now because I am working on getting another room turned into a crafting room. Um, a little bit of background without getting too deep into it. Um, when my husband and I moved into this house, we actually moved in with my mother about five years ago. Um, she was having a hard time with, um, you know, she basically, was at a point in her life where she needed to not be completely by herself. So we found this really awesome house um, that had space to basically have two families in it. Um, so she had her room and her living room um, and stuff downstairs off the kitchen. And we had our living room and our bedrooms and stuff upstairs. Um, it's a great big house, super awesome. Um, so, but she passed away about two years ago. And um, now that she is not with us anymore, um, you know, at the moment, the room is still full of her stuff. It's been really difficult to try to deal with all of that. Um, but I'm working on it. I'm working with a therapist. I'm working with friends um, to kind of work through some of that stuff. And so my hope is to turn her space, what was her space, into a creative space where I can be, I can make art, I can make um, crafty things, I can do positive, uplifting, fun things that I think she would have enjoyed. So anyway, <laughs> so this is the temporary setup. Eventually I'll have a permanent setup um, down in what will be the craft room. Um, I'm trying to stop calling it mom's room. Um, so it will be my craft room, it'll be my creative space. So anyway, and um, I'm trying to kick that process up because um, as you may have heard in um, that little behind the scenes video that I did in between floss tubes, um, I am officially official as a business now. Mislaid Pages is a business, of like an official, official business. Um, and the only reason that I make such a big deal about it is because now that I'm officially registered as a business, I can actually get wholesale accounts, which opens me up to a whole bunch of new opportunities and new fun stuff that I'm super excited to be able to share with you. Um, some of that is coming very, very, very soon. Um, I'll be able to order some patterns that I can share with you through my Etsy shop. Um, one of those, um, and I didn't actually put a link to it in the stuff that I'm sharing with you, but I will share it in future floss tubes. And you may have already read, you may have already heard of them. So um, Plum Street Samplers uh, is a designer that I have come to know recently through Michelle Bendy Stitchy primarily, and um, they are fantastic. They have these super cute designs, sort of primitive, um, older style, but like super, super cute stuff. Um, and there's a couple of lines of their designs that I plan on carrying very, very soon. Um, so you'll be seeing those in the Etsy shop. I'll definitely announce it here as well. Um, but in the future, that's going to also enable me, having those wholesale accounts is going to enable me to design my own patterns and not only provide the PDF patterns, if that's what you choose, but I can provide full kits with the floss and everything too. So I'm really looking forward to being able to do that for you guys. Um, <clears throat> so that's the main update. So that's why, 
you know, new different stuff. I also have, and I haven't tried it out yet. I have this new, um, it's a cutting and embossing tool. I got it for 15 bucks at Michael's. Can you believe that? It was in the clearance section. Um, and it was actually labeled for $22. My husband was like, eh, go ahead and get it. You've been wanting one of those for a while. And it's little, it's only it does like two and a quarter inches or something like that. Um, but he's like, you've been wanting one of those for a while. So go ahead and get it. I'm trying to talk too fast. Um, but anyway, he told me to go ahead and get it. We took it to the register and lo and behold, it was $7 less than the discount price. Hey, baby, bang, blah, blah, blah. big bang theory, folks. Directly, one of these days, I'm going to get the directions. Okay, I'm going to take a sip of coffee and I'm going to simmer down. I'm trying to do this super fast because I'm trying to get it done and I don't want to have to do a bunch of editing. But you know what happens when you rush, you make mistakes. So let's calm it down, bring it down. Okay, so. <clears throat> Uh, that's the basic update. So let's talk about um, a lot of floss tubers have their own little segment, like a thing that is them. Um, I know that uh, Kitten Stitcher, love her to death. She has her uh, What I'm All Into. Uh, Michelle Bendy Stitchy has her best new thing in the world. Um, everybody has their little thing. So I'm going to try to make my little thing be what I'm reading, or actually technically I need to call it what I'm listening to because um, as I mentioned last time, I don't do a lot of reading because it takes away from my time to do other stuff. I'm such a slow reader and as much as I love reading and exposing myself to new literature and things like that, it's just there's not enough, there are not enough hours in the day. I mean, is this just me or is there's just not enough hours in the day? So anyway, let me share my screen here. And let's talk about what I'm listening to. So this is, uh, I'm a Goodreads fan. Um, I don't, I probably need to change this to mislaid pages just so folks can find me since I'm trying to be like this whole brand thing. Um, but this is my uh, 2020 reading challenge. So I have challenged myself to listen to 36 books this year. So that's three books a month. Um, so far you can see I'm on track. So I believe I already talked about this. Maybe you should talk to somebody. It's a really great book about a therapist in therapy. Um, so. If you've ever wondered what happens in therapy and why anybody would go and especially why a therapist might need therapy, um, this is a great book. So it's a sort of an autobiography, really good listen. Uh, this is Follow Me to Ground. This is from Jenny Lawson's Fantastic Strangelings Book Club, uh, which I highly recommend that you check out, even if you don't purchase the books from Jenny Lawson um, and her new store, Nowhere, um, the store that is up and coming and in construction. Um, and Jenny Lawson, for those who aren't familiar, she is known as the bloggist. So she's a blogger um, on, uh, on the internet, the internets. Um, she's one of my favorite people ever. Her first book was Let's Pretend This Never Happened, which was a book of sort of uh, short essays and things. Some of them from her blog online, some of them written specifically for the book. She's hilarious. She's funny. She's brilliant. She's, um, she's also really down to earth and she struggles with depression and anxiety and she talks a lot about that. And it's helped me deal with some of my own stuff. Um, and I know that a lot of people have felt that way as well. So if you haven't checked her out, definitely check out her stuff. Uh, but also check out her uh, Fantastic Strangelings book club because she has some interesting suggestions. So this was January selection, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Follow Me to Ground, which is a very short read, very quick. Um, I think on Audible it was four and a half hours. Um, so super, super short, but really interesting. The language is really rich. Um, I talked about this a lot last time, so check out The Last Floss too. Um, I also read Kingdom Keepers. Uh, this is for those of you who are following Magical School of Magical Stitches and Literature. This was January's book of the month. Um, I did read it in the interest of you know participation and that sort of thing. I didn't love it. Um, I like young adult fiction, um, but it, it it wasn't for me. Again, I talked a lot about that in the last one. So <clears throat> let's move on to. I have to actually go to the screen here. I think. How do I do this? Oh, here. Here we go. <laughs> so uh, the first book I read for February is Mirror Mirror. And Mirror Mirror is written by Gregory Maguire. Gregory Maguire. Slowing down. Chilling out. Okay. Gregory, Gregory Maguire. Apparently, I'm just not going to be able to say his name. He's also the author of Wicked. Uh, if you loved Wicked, I don't recommend Mirror Mirror. 
and I'll tell you why. <laughs> uh, Wicked is a very, very, very different book from Mirror Mirror. So Wicked, if I remember correctly, and it's been a while since I've read it, but obviously um, many of us know the Broadway version of it. Um, it's not at all written in the real world. Um, it's very much written in a fantasy world, just like the original um, uh, Wizard of Oz was written in a fantasy world um, with only sort of a, a very tenuous tie to reality. Um, Mirror Mirror is written as if it were happening, as if Snow White were happening during Borgia, Italy. Um, so we're talking like the Machiavellian era of Italy with lots of political intrigue, lots of backhandedness and backstabbiness and uh, the corruption of the Catholic Church and all of that mess. Now, if you love the things like the Borgias, um, you know, television series like that, you love old Italian political intrigue and stuff like that, maybe this is the book for you. Uh, for me personally, it was not the book for me. I didn't care for all of that historical entrenchment. Um, the book itself, the story of Snow White, was very strange and difficult to follow. Um, so I just didn't care for the book overall. Um, listening to it was just fine. The narrators were great. Um, and there were multiple narrators. They had different folks voicing different characters. It wasn't a full-on cast production, um, but they did have some different sections of the book that were spoken in different voices. Uh, the book was written in different voices, so they had different voice actors do those sections, and that was that was really successful. So the the production uh, of the audio I thought was great. Um, the actual book itself didn't care for, wouldn't listen to again. Do not recommend. So uh, that's Mirror Mirror. So what I'm listening to now is the, um, the February uh, book of the month for uh, Fantastic Strangelings Book Club. And I do kind of wish that Jenny Lawson had a, a provision to be able to join the book club through her store, but get an audio copy because I would love to support her store, but there's no sense in me buying a paper copy of a book. Um, I'm just not as much as I love books, and let me tell you, you haven't seen my bookshelves. Um, my bookshelves are overflowing already, um, but I just I just don't have time to read the book, so there's no sense in paying 20 some bucks for, for a paper book that I can't have time to read. So anyway, um, the February selection for um, Fantastic Strangelings Book Club is American Sherlock, uh, which is written by Kate Winkler Dawson. It's also narrated by Kate Winkler Dawson, which is interesting. Um, I usually like, I usually prefer books that are narrated by the authors um, because I find a lot of times the author can bring something to it that maybe a, a, another voice actor couldn't. Um, this is one of those situations where because the author is very much a kind of a scholarly person, she's someone who works more in um, the research and academic and, um, you know, scholastic kind of field. Um, she sounds like she's giving a lecture, uh, which might be your thing. It's not my personal favorite um, because it's not like Neil Gaiman giving a lecture. Um, it's it's much like more one of your standard um, college professors giving a lecture. It's it's not as exciting as it could be. Um, it also and this is <laughs> I'll, I'll preface this. This is a personal issue of mine, um, and Heike might be able to relate. It bothers me that uh, Kate Winkler Dawson pronounces the um, the gentleman that she is talking about. Oh, I can't remember his first name. His last name, oh, it's Oscar. She talks, the whole book is about Oscar Heinrich and how he basically was the father of modern CSI. Um, he sort of uh, developed the science behind forensics and you know how we use it today and that kind of stuff so that's that's how he's American Sherlock and she calls him consistently Oscar Heinrich Heinrich and it bugs the crap out of me um, because even if it I mean it should at the very least it should be Heinrich just say Heinrich because it's German and she even says he's German and if he's German it wouldn't be pronounced Heinrich at least not in my not in my admittedly limited German experience. I, I had several years, well, I say several, I had like eight years of German in high school and middle school and stuff like that. So I'm not an expert. I didn't, I did live in Germany for four years when I was a teeny tiny kid. 
Um, so I shouldn't act like, oh, I know everything. Um, Heike would be the actual expert since Heike is German, living in Germany, speaking German. Uh, so Heike, if I'm wrong, please correct me, but it just, it bugs me. It should be Heinrich, Heinrich, anyway. But I speak Hochdeutsch, so it's a little bit different than some other dialects. So anyway, I'm only about two hours into this. I think it's a 10 hour book. Um, so far, the the information is interesting. I'm not sure I like the way the book is set up. It's sort of, it gives you a little bit of information and says, oh, wait, but you're not going to find out the end of that. Let's go way over here and talk about this stuff that happened 40 years before that. And before we resolve this stuff from 40 years ago, let's jump ahead 20 more years and then talk about that. So it's kind of like, I don't know, I'm going to have to finish the book and see what I think about it. So that's what I'm listening to right now. Let's pop this back here because I think that's all I'm doing for that. I actually, I have an actual list of things that I'm trying to get through today. <laughs> so I have to refer to my list really quickly and see. Um, okay. So yeah, that's what, that's what I'm listening to right now. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure what, what is next on deck. We only have what, 12 days left, 13 days if you count today, left in February. So um, American Sherlock might take up the rest of my my month. So we'll see. Um, I'm trying to do some, some extra credit reading for um, School of Magical Stitches and Literature. Um, Mirror Mirror was actually my alternative, uh, my alternate assignment, um, because that's a retelling of Snow White. So we could do that instead of reading the villain's book, though it actually sounds like the villain's book might be better than the Kingdom Keepers. So I don't know. We'll see. I don't know if I'll check that out or not. I'm running out of Audible credits, so I kind of need to try to make things match stuff that I already have. <laughs> and I'm trying to find books um, that I already have that are maybe 10 hours or less because it's easier to get multiple in during a month. Um, I mostly listen to the books when I have time to sit and stitch um, and I don't have a bunch of stuff that I'm catching up on television, um, then I then I will listen to audios and stuff if I don't have floss to. So um, I'll listen to it while I'm stitching or I'll listen to it in the car and that kind of stuff. So, um, but yeah, 10 hours is, is a good um, a good short kind of listen so that I can get through a couple of them in a month. So um, possibly I'll be listening to some uh, some of the Kitty Norville books coming up. I read physically read three or four of those books. They're by Kat and Carrie Vaughn um, several years ago. I love them. Uh, I don't usually get into the supernatural werewolf vampire. Um, genre, um, just because it kind of exploded, and you had Charlene Harris, and you had um, <clears throat> Laurel K. Hamilton, and a bunch of those doing these kind of like ish. Uh, oh, and Twilight, you know, um, where the writing was not so great, but people were super in love with them, and all this kind of stuff. So, but uh, the Carrie Vaughn books are written really well, um, and even though the main character is a werewolf it's a very different kind of story than a lot of the other supernatural thrillers out there. Anyway, this is floss tube. This is not book tube. So let me move on. <laughs> I don't even know. This thing doesn't have a timer. So I don't even know. Oh, 18 minutes. Yeah. So 18 minutes in and we still haven't talked about floss tube. So let's get right to it. Let's talk about some January finishes. So, um, I don't have any finished finishes because I'm working on so many year long stitch alongs. But what I'm going to do this year is we're going to have monthly finishes because otherwise I'll never feel like I accomplished anything this year. I will be doing some smaller projects coming up. Um, but, um, but yeah, I got a lot of stuff going on. So, um, you know, trying to, to focus on finishes, like actual finishes, um, is going to be going to kind of make me crazy. So let's talk about some January finishes. Let me find it. So finally, just this week, if you follow me on Instagram, I'm mislaid pages there as well, um, at mislaid pages. Um, you saw that I finally finished uh, January's Animal Almanac. So there is, there is teensy tiny little Aurora. Let me see if I can get her closer to frame. It's not going to focus very well. Uh, I have to do something. I need to. I need a different camera. This webcam is great for doing lives, but it's not so great. There we go. Not so great for doing stuff where I'm going back and forth and back and forth. So we'll leave it focused like this for a little bit. So this is Aurora. Um, if you're being super picky, I technically haven't finished January because there are some silver. Where's my finger? Okay. There's some silver gray 
stitches that need to go in these corner pieces. So technically speaking, I haven't really finished, but I'm calling it a finish. Mm, excuse me. I'm calling it finished because Aurora has been so frustrating to me um, that I, I just really need this. Please give this to me, people. <laughs> so we're calling that a finish, um, and I'll be starting on Rennie very soon. I'm trying to decide what kind of priority I'm going to give Rennie just because I want to get other stuff done, but I really want to catch up on this because I just I just need to catch up on it. So, so that's a January finish, um, and also... And this one I'm actually kind of excited about. I finally caught up with the Peppermint Purple um, Year of Black Pork SAL. So <clears throat> here is, um, and I'm still technically caught up for another two days, I think, because the new pattern, um, the new pattern came out Wednesday, um, and I haven't stitched the new pattern, but I still have two days left. So. Um, this is definitely all of January, and it's the first couple of part in the buzzing. Okay. That's my reminder telling me that I have to go to the car place in half an hour. Um, fortunately, it's just up the street, so I've probably got another 15 minutes of filming. <laughs> this is, yeah, I'm going to have to come back. Um, anyway, so this is going to end up being a spliced video. I apologize, guys. Um, so, yeah, here we have, um, let's see. I guess, yeah, so the first, the top row is basically all January, and then uh, this piece right here is February. That's the, the first or second week of February, and then we'll have another square right there um, that came out this past Wednesday, and then this coming Wednesday, the next pattern comes out. We get one a week, so that is Peppermint Purple. So I've got two, two January finishes. Um, which makes me very happy, even though it is the middle of February. At least I'm, I'm, I'm making some progress. It's good. So, <clears throat> let's see. Um, I'll do, yeah, let me, oh my gosh. <laughs> I just have so much stuff. Oh, this is going to be, this is going to be a weird one. Okay. So um, since I'm talking about finishes, let me go ahead and talk about whoops. I was going to do something else next, but it makes more sense to just do whips. So um, this is actually, I haven't done a ton of stuff. I'm trying to remember where I was the last time we talked on this one. I don't think I've made a lot of progress, but as you can see, I've got a little bit of this sort of like North Star thing happening. This is Grimm's Fairy Tale, Grimm's Fairy Tales by Clouds Factory. Um, I should try to remember to state everything because I don't know who knows what. Um, I feel like everybody knows about these SALs, but maybe not. This is on 18 count um, Ada from Mystic Fabrics. Um, it's a really pretty greenish blue. It comes out kind of gray. Um, it, the colors are a little bit better today. The light is more more normal. I think the last time I filmed it was super bright and nothing was everything was washed out. Anyway, this is a super cute SAL, super cute. I didn't think I was going to love it to start with, but I'd actually, I really like it. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not sure why I like this so much better as far as the stitching goes. I mean, the designs, when, when we talk about the designs, I think I actually like Animal Almanac better. I like the look of it, but the stitching is so much better with this. I think part of it is this is not, this doesn't have a ton of confetti and uh, Aurora love her as I might, um, there was so much confetti and it was so hard to finish her because I was realizing I need to start this color, but there's only four stitches in this color. And then I need to switch to that color. And there's only six stitches in that. It was making me crazy. I hate that. Hate, hate, hate. Um, so Aurora, I love you, but yeah, the, the confetti was killing me. This has got, um, it's got very small areas of color, but they're all together. Um, so let me just kind of <clears throat> give you another glimpse um, or another perspective. So look at the back on this. Look how neat and tidy and pretty. Isn't it cute? The back is almost as nice as the front because all the colors are together. Now let's look at Aurora's back. Aurora is not so neat and pretty. Oh, I can't get her straight and now I'm getting sniffles. You know, there's carries all over the place, especially from the stuff that I just finished. Um, I don't know how well you can really see that, but yeah. So, yeah. And I apologize. The kitties are 
the the kitty television out the window is all kinds of crazy this morning and they are going insane they're usually crazier in the morning than they are any other time so anyway yeah so grims is really fun i'm hoping to finish that up in the next week or so um and get started on the uh the february pattern which this one is um the musicians of bremen which i love um it's a story i always really loved and the next one is the princess and the frog so um and let's see so the last whip i have right now that i've actually worked on there's cat hair everywhere um this is my linen and threads mystery sal for 2020 the family and friends <clears throat> let me just get it in a in a position where i can actually show it to you okay um, I haven't done a ton of stuff. I decided I was going to add a second colorway. And again, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this. Um, so this color that I've added is a, um, a hand dyed from Dying for Cross Stitch by Kathy Davidson. It's this really gorgeous. I showed it a couple of times, a couple of months ago, maybe last video. I can't remember. Anyway, I showed it recently and decided I wanted to add it because I love the purples and blues. I really thought that the purple in the new colorway was going to pull out the purple in the Indian tapestry. I haven't really decided how I feel about this. Um, but yeah, I, uh, part of me wishes I'd stuck with the Indian tapestry and just done that throughout. Part of me is really liking the blue and the purple. I haven't decided yet. So yeah, so I've done a little bit on that. Um, I haven't been stitching as much um, this month as I was last month, um, especially the last, since we last talked, because um, I've been doing so many other things, um, a lot of which are business related. And so that's the whole thing. I've been um, really working hard to get all my ducks in a row and to communicate with some wholesalers and things like that. So a lot of my outside work time has been spent trying to get that stuff together, working on stuff for the Etsy shop, um, you know, lots of different things that unfortunately don't allow me to stitch as much. So um, I actually, as far as School of Magical Stitches and Literature, my biggest contributions have been through reading. I've done, um, I think I'm, I can't remember if I did a week one homework, any of the week one homework. Um, I know I didn't do any of the week two homework for February. I'm going to try to do week three, but it'll depend on whether I actually feel like counting stitches. And that's, that's the biggest thing is that the counting the stitches is kind of frustrating to me. Most of my patterns don't work in Pattern Keeper, Pattern master that app that everybody uses um if they did that would be fantastic because i just go click 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 and it'll tell me how many stitches um but my patterns don't work there so um so we'll see this week is a thousand stitches on either something that makes you want to um hole up inside away from the world become a recluse um or to pick something that has you deeply and hopelessly in love or something like that so a thousand stitches on a thing. Um, <clears throat> so um, I can certainly figure out which thing I want to stitch on, but um, it'll just be a matter of whether I count the stitches or not. And we'll see how organized I get about cross stitching this week. So I was hoping to do a bunch of stitching today. I don't know if that's going to happen. There's just way too much stuff that has to get done. So anyway, so that is the whips. That's all the whips. Let me have some copy. Uh, so, um, I was going to do this whole thing on my 24 hours of cross stitch planner. I think I'm going to pass on doing too much detail just because of time, but um, I did kind of a little preview. If you're interested in the 24 hours of cross stitch planner um, and how I've set it up, let me know. Um, I'll, I'll talk about it more in a future video. But this is a, um, this is a tool disc bound planner um, that I already had on hand that I bought years ago because I was going to do a whole bunch of stuff with it. You can see that mine is super thick. This is not all the 24 hours of cross stitch planner stuff. Um, I've added a whole bunch of extra printable pages that she provided, um, extra copies of it. And I've also, um, <clears throat> I got a bunch of blank pages in the back here. These are, these are pages, I, graph paper pages that I bought uh, with the original tool thing. Um, so <clears throat> most of this is, um is 24 hours of cross stitch but her actual file is only like 86 pages i just printed a bunch of copies of the extra printables because they're like 
weekly planners and things like that. So um, you can see I've, what I've done here is I actually purchased um, pre-cut dotted um, disc bound paper. Um, the cats are going crazy. Um, so this was um, the, uh, the paper was already pre-punched. Why are my cats going crazy? Why are you fussing, Momo? What's the matter? I don't know if you can hear her, but she, she was whining like crazy. Um, oh, and her tail's all brushed out. What's the matter? Okay, something got her riled up. Anyway, she doesn't. She's not usually the one who gets all crazy like that. That's usually Loki. Okay, she settled down. Anyway, so this was already pre-punched. Um, it, it has the dot grids on it, um, like a lot of people like to use for bullet journaling. And then I took this to a standard, well, maybe not a standard printer, a fancy printer. <laughs> and I printed it. Um, I resized it for, actually, I didn't even resize it. I took the original files and um, told the printer that I wanted to print it on eight and a half by, um, by five and a half paper and then told it to size to fit. Um, and so now all the pages are eight and a half by five and a half instead of eight and a half by 11. And, um, you know, I've got all the stuff from the, uh, from the planner in here. So I've got my, my monthly calendar. Um, and I've been really lax on, um, getting my acrostic goals put together. Um, and actually last night I just did some of these and I, um, I am kind of mostly added in stuff that I'd already finished, um, which is kind of cheating at cheat face, but you know, you take the wins where you can get them. It's stuff that I would have decided to do anyway. The other thing that I did, um, I started doing, <clears throat> and I got this idea from one of uh, Michelle Bendy Stitchy's old videos. Um, I've got my monthly and weekly, and you can tell that I've only just done this week's um, homework for School of Magical Stitches and Literature because I passed in the last two weeks, but I've got little boxes um, to show me what I need to do to give me an idea of how I need to do stuff. So anyway, um, so that's my planner. The other thing I'm trying to do, I don't know about you all, uh, but I have a really hard time focusing on the stuff that I have done versus the stuff that needs to be done. Um, so I'll make a to-do list and all I can really think about when I'm done with the day is how much I didn't finish. Um, and it's kind of an issue. I mean, it, it stresses me out, gives me a little bit of anxiety. I actually talked about my therapist, talked about it with my therapist the last time I saw her. And we came up with this idea or with this plan of, you know, making my to-do list because it's helpful to have a to-do list, helps keep you organized and stuff. But um, to also, at the end of the day, instead of looking at the to-do list and what's not checked off, to make a separate list that is the finish list, the things that I actually did. So I'm calling it to-do and to-done. So I have my huge to-do list on this side, as you can see. And then, um, and this is, none of this got done yesterday. Um, <clears throat> so I have to do it all today. Um, and this is my to done list. This is all the things that I did yesterday. Um, so, and the idea is to focus on ta -da! this is the stuff that I finished. So working on that, I need to do that on a weekly basis. It's really the weekends that stress me out as far as that goes, because during the week, um, <clears throat> I seem to have a basic understanding during the week that you can only get X number of things done in an evening after work because you have three or four hours after you get home from work and cook dinner and all that sort of stuff. And you just know that you can't get a whole bunch of things done. But somehow on the weekend, I feel like I'm going to be superwoman and um, somehow magically have time to do things that take at least 72 hours worth of actual time working on them. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to train myself not to have such um, unrealistic standards. And, uh, so that's one of the things that I'm doing with that. So, yeah, so it's kind of fun. Um, I, I like this whole ta -da idea. I don't know if that's a, maybe I'm just silly. <laughs> it kind of works for me. So, okay. Let's talk about, I might have to skip a couple of these sections. So, oh, it's quarter to 10. Yeah, I probably need to pause at this point. So, yeah, I'm at a good place. So I'm gonna pause and probably snip this out and then start a new video. 
Hello again, Stitchy friends. So um, hopefully there was only like a two second break for you. It's been like a three hour break for me. We are almost at the exactly three hours since I um, since I said pause um, or whatever it is I said, I'll figure it out when I go to editing. <laughs> so I have a new cup of coffee. The old cup of coffee was half drunk and cold. Um, this is nice and warm and hot, even though it's almost 1 p.m. in the afternoon, I, am, I really want my coffee. So cars all inspected, um, had to have some more stuff done than I would have liked, but nothing too awfully terrible. My car is not that old, um, though I was doing the math. I think my car is now six years old. I, I, it was the first car I ever bought brand new, and now it is, um, it is past the toddler stage. <laughs> so, oh, it's weird to think how time flies. So anyway. I actually toyed around with the idea of completely redoing the first part of this, but I think I've decided that as late as in, as late in the day as it is, um, let's just roll with what we have. I'll do a minimal amount of editing between the two pieces, um, just because I have to beat down the perfectionist side of me and, um, you know, kind of make decisions in favor of the part of me that would like to actually do some cross stitching later today. So I have quite a number of things left on my life to-do list. Um, so we'll see if the cross-stitching happens. But anyway, so let's get back to this. So before I left, or right when I left, I was going to go through um, and talk about some, some patterns that I would like to, or charts that I would like to get involved in soonishly. Um, there's a bunch of patterns that I still want to buy. I'm going to talk about some of them um, in a little bit, but there's, um, oh, and for those who are wondering, I am going to talk about the um, the de-stashing slash giveaways uh, towards the end of the video. So just hold tight or fast forward, <laughs> whatever makes you happy. Um, regardless, I forgot to mention that at the beginning. So um, yes, I, I have decided on winners and I will talk about that in a little bit. Um, but, um, so I will talk about also patterns that are charts that I'm, I'm looking to buy perhaps in the future, but, um, I want to show you some stuff that I think I would like to start soon. So, um, doing my screen share again, let me just, uh, let me just figure out. Do, 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 do. Okay. So this is a heaven and earth and I actually have, I have two heaven and earth designs now. I just purchased my second one. Friday, Saturday, it was Saturday because it was the 15th. So it was the day after Valentine's Day. It was happy, happy day after Valentine's Day to you, Jesse, um, after the Hayed sale is over because you were too indecisive to actually take advantage of the Hayed sale. So anyway, um, this is actually one I purchased last year. Pardon the coffee. Um, oddly, caffeine calms me down. It doesn't speed me up. So. Anyway, uh, this is a piece called Long I Have Waited. It is by uh, Christina, Christy Grandjean, um, and it is available on Heaven and Earth Designs still. I bought the mini size. So the mini, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Heaven and Earth Designs, mini is not mini in your traditional sense of the word. It means that um, the pattern is probably two thirds of the size of the full, and the full can be when you measure it out completed can be maybe 20 inches by 24 depending on the actual design uh, this particular one um, i believe it's going to end up being 10 by 13 on 25 count lugana let me look at this so i will uh i'll close out this really quickly so the finished design it's 250 stitches wide by 325 high. So on 25 count fabric, it's going to be 10 by 13 inches. Yeah. So that that's uh, that's what the mini is. Um, actually, let me just adjust that so you can see that. So <clears throat> so this was the first piece on Heaven and Earth that I fell in love with. Um, I love her designs. She tends to do um, some anthropomorphic and um, sort of indigenous peoples, Native American themed sort of images. Um, this is a little bit different than some of the other images that she's done. Um, I love the colors in it. Um, this is the style of dragon that I really prefer when I see dragons. I'm not an oriental style dragon lover. Um, and those are the types uh, like your, your typical Chinese dragon where the dragon has a long snake-like body and may or may not have limbs or wings. Um, I like the four-legged dragon, the traditional dragon with big wings and 
the sort of pointy face. Um, if you have ever seen Flight of Dragons um, that came out back in the 80s, those are the dragons that I first learned to be dragons. Those and uh, you know the images that you saw in the old, old Dungeons and Dragons uh, RPG books. Um, so that's the kind of dragon that I prefer. So anyway, love, love, love the colors. Um, I've had this one since about September last year, um, and I've been dying to, um, I love especially this kind of peacock tail happening right here. Um, but I've been dying to start it, and I just haven't for one reason and another. I actually have had the fabric uh, for ages, but it's not the, um, a lot of folks, uh, me included now, would prefer to do a Heaven and Earth Designs excuse me, on a piece of fabric that is already gridded for them. Um, and that's simply because this is a massive design. When you think about 250 by 350 stitches, you're talking, you know, tens of thousands of, of ultimate stitches, uh, ultimate, yeah, of stitches ultimately, um, because this is a full coverage piece. And so even if you, even if you get fabric that's not gridded, if you get a designed fabric or a dyed fabric, you're not going to see most of that nifty stuff so why bother so what I have done is I've gotten a piece of gridded fabric we'll see that later um but in addition to having this like I said I just bought I just just bought Contessa with squid <laughs> and uh, Rachel's gonna get a kick out of this I think because I literally just told her I don't think I want to do Contessa with squid because there's so much dark and I just don't think I can do pages and pages of dark but you know Somebody on one of my groups was asking about octopus charts and octopus patterns, and I threw this one out there because I was like, you know, it's not technically an octopus, but depending on what you're looking for, you know, this might float your boat. I mean, she's got this cool little squid here, you know. Um, I mean, how can you not love, like, Squidward right there? And he's got a little fish, you know. I mean, it, it's a pretty cool piece. I, I've been watching Michelle Bendy Stitchy. Um, stitch on this for I, I don't even know how long because I'm I'm going back and forth between watching her recent stuff you know the stuff that she's posting currently and some of her older stuff from maybe March April time last year about this time last year and so I'm not really sure where she is with it right now because I can't remember but I know this is one of the the large pieces that she's working on and I kept looking at it thinking oh it's so cool she's so cool because she's working on it and then this person asked for octopus pattern. So I was like, well, you know, and then it was, it was shortly after that somebody commented um, because they're working on this piece too. So they commented on that thread um, with their progress. And I was just, I fell in love all over again. I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it. I even asked them, how do you keep yourself motivated? And they said, well, you know, it is kind of mindless, but that doesn't mean you can watch TV while you're doing it. I'm like, ha 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 ha. So yes. I have purchased Contessa with Squid. Um, so now with my one piece of 25 count Easy Grid Ada, or not Ada, I apologize, Lugana, I am not sure whether I'm gonna do Contessa with Squid or Long I Have Waited. Part of me is really leaning towards Contessa because she's so rich. I mean, there's just all, it's not vibrant, but these colors are just rich and decadent. So maybe I'll start looking at the floss list and see what I have that I can get started on with her. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of 310 and stuff up here in the corner and I've got skeins and skeins of 310. So I might be able to, might be able to get started with her. I know I have um, a bunch of these blues, um, maybe not all throughout, but um, I've already checked the first couple of pages up here in the top left corner, and I've got the blues and stuff for that. So I could really probably start either one. It's just a question of, hmm, for some reason, I'm feeling Contessa. I'm really feeling Contessa. So she might be my very first full coverage, heaven and earth, gigantic, massive piece. We'll see. Um, but that's that's something I'm thinking about working on soon. The other thing I'm thinking about starting, um, and I know it seems silly to start anything else, honestly, with all these SALs that I'm so far behind on. But I think I'm in that place where it's like I need I need I need an easy win. <laughs> so I have picked out this super cute small pattern. Um, it's called I Don't Believe in Humans. <laughs> And it's a unikitty, and she's got a rainbow tail. <laughs> and it's just the cutest thing ever. 
and she is only 61 by 79 inches uh, stitches so um super quick i think super cute i think there's a lot of um uh back stitching here uh this is a this is a design by little room in the attic uh patterns and handmade by maria Domina, and i believe uh she is um russian or eastern european um but she definitely has that style where there's lots of those fine lines where you're doing all that back stitching and stuff to create that detail and that sort of thing. It does have some credit color, so I'll have to order those. But the main part of the stitching is regular DMC, and I'm pretty sure I have those on hand. It's very similar uh, in palette to one of the other projects that I will be working on in the future. Um, so I'm I'm thinking about throwing her in, especially because um, between fabrics that I have, fabrics that I've made, and fabrics that I've recently purchased, I know that I've got to have a piece of fabric that I can just toss this right up on. Um, and I, so I think I might do that just so I can have a quick finish. So yeah, so those are some things that I'm uh, looking at working on soon. Um, also, I have to tell you, and this is totally Rachel's fault. Rachel, I'm, I'm looking at you. I'm blaming you. And you can be mad if you want, but um, uh, if you watch Rachel Ray, Rachel Ray Craft, um, she's mentioned a couple times that I'm helping her gather some floss for a, a heaven and earth design that she's working on. Well, I was going through those flosses the other day just to inventory, make sure everything was there, make sure everything got packaged, all that sort of stuff. And I'm looking at the colors and the colors are just so fantastic. Um, and the piece that she's, she's getting ready to work on is Soul of the Rose. Um, this is a piece by, let me see, John William Waterhouse, um, also sold by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, and when she first showed it, I knew that I liked it. Um, I'm a big fan of redheads, just like she is. Redhead, redheads run in my family as well. Um, you know, and it's, it's just one of those things. It's a really gorgeous piece. It's a little bit more, um, I guess impressionist might be the right, um, the right genre. Um, it's a little bit more impressionistic than I would usually look for for a cross stitch or something like that, but it's a really, really beautiful piece. Um, and this is the full color select a size, I believe. Um, I still think it, I think it's massive, but it's got 125 colors. So I'm pulling together these colors for her and I'm looking at all the DMC floss laid out together and all I can see is how gorgeous how gorgeous the color palette is and i'm like you know what you know what i might i might have to do that but i will tell you this um this one is not going to happen anytime soon in fact i will probably i will probably not even purchase this pattern uh this chart until or unless uh Haya does another big sale which i mean seems like it's every other month right now but um this last sale was like a couple bucks off or something like that they have done 50 percent off sales so I will probably wait, um, as I said, until they do another sale and, uh, and I'll, I'll work on it then. Cause I, I already have those other two heaven and earth designs and me personally, it's fine to have however many whips that you want to have. I, for me personally, I don't think I need to have two heaven and earth designs in addition to the two or three very large, uh, stitch alongs that I'm already working on. I think that's just way, it's way too much. Um, if I did 59 smalls um, in addition to what I'm doing, I would be totally happy with that. I can't imagine having that many large pieces. So this one, this one might be down the road, but oh my God, the colors, especially, I think it's 3807 or something. Is this like turquoise teal color? Oh, it's like my favorite DMC um, other than purples. But yeah, so that will be coming someday. So let me just take a look here. So that's new charts that I want to. Oh, and there's <laughs> um, there's a chart I'm not going to show you. Um, I will show you once I actually give um, give the items to the individuals. I have two friends right now um, who are expecting. Uh, one of them is a friend from work, and one is a friend of my brother's. Um, and they are. I think they're due within a month of each other. So I think uh, my work friend is due in June. Uh, my brother's friend is due in July. So new babies all around. <laughs> and I have found the cutest, snarkiest, funniest pattern that I think I'm gonna do for both of them. Um, I'm not gonna show it to you in case somehow they might get the word, but um, but yeah, I'm gonna do, I think it's gonna be a quick stitch. Um, and I won't even be able to post it to Instagram either because my work friend follows me on Instagram. So 
Um, but yeah, once those are done and gifted, I will post those. But I think it's it's gonna it's hilarious. It's hilarious, and they're just the kind of people that I think will appreciate it. So that's it for the new charts um, and the chart that I want because um, I don't have the pictures right now of the Plum Street samplers that I wanted to show you. There's also there's a couple of kits too that I want to get. Um, and maybe I'll talk about those next time because I've talked a lot about what I have and what I'm what I'm looking at. So let's save something for next floss too. Um, but there's a Bothy Threads kit uh, that Rachel was talking about that I kind of covet that I think I might want at some point in the future. Not that I copy everything Rachel does, but she has good taste. I mean, what can I say? You know, it's I find out about a lot of things through my floss tube friends. So you know, Michelle Bendy Stitchy has she's the reason I know about Plum Street samplers. Um, Rachel is the reason that I know about Heaven and Earth, I think. Um, and uh, Carla, what did Carla introduce me to? Carla over at um, Rolodex Stitches um, has introduced me to a whole lot of stuff, too. I mean, she she sent me down the floss tube rabbit hole. I'm just telling you that now. Um, and I don't like to be a creeper, but we're in some of the same groups. And whenever I see her, I'm like, oh, I love your floss tube. And I'm, I'm sure she thinks I'm crazy. But, um, but you know, maybe one day we'll be friends. Um, and, you know, that would be awesome. So we'll see. Um, and, and I hope someday I'll be friends with Michelle Mindy Stitchy too, because she seems like one of the most awesome people in the world. And also Kitten Stitcher. So hi, um, promise I'm not a stalker, but you know, good to meet you. <laughs> Hopefully that really didn't come off as creepy as it seems, because I don't want to do so much editing today. Okay, there's also a bunch of national market patterns coming up. Um, I'm getting some of them through Misty. Some of them I think I'm going to get after the fact um, through my own um, channels. Um, nothing against Misty, but if I have my own wholesale access, then I, I think I'm going to take advantage of that when I can. Um, I do, just as a complete side note, um, I don't know how many of you know about National Market or don't know about National Needle Market. National Needle Market, um, it is, from what I hear, it is like the biggest cross stitch needlework. Um, buyer seller market that happens um, in the US and it is happening in March um, I think like the 6th through the 9th or something I can't go this year um, I am a seller um, at this point I'm a um, or I'm not a seller I shouldn't say it from their perspective I'm a buyer um, I'd be a wholesale buyer so um, and I do have I've I've spoken with um, Yarn Tree and um, did get an invite to go this year. I'm just not able to because of money and time and all that sort of stuff. But totally planning on going to national market in 2021. Um, you will hear more about that next year. Um, and I'll definitely give you a heads up to anything that I have access to that you all might be interested in having access to as well, in case you don't have access to it through other channels. So there are tons of free patterns that you can only get if you go to market, and you can only go to market if you're a buyer, a wholesale buyer, if you're a designer, or if you're a retailer. So um, as a new retailer, I might be able to get access to those for you. I will also be able to get access to um, market-only patterns, things that will only be available for sale at the market, um, and that sort of thing. So it's going to be super exciting. Um, I hope to, to clue you all into that next year. Um, there will be some patterns that I'm getting, like I said, this year that I will show you once I have those, but that's going to be sometime middle of March uh, because I will be getting those after Misty gets back. So <clears throat> let's see. Um, and that was pretty much my my Etsy update and that sort of thing. So um, in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see a lot of new stuff going up in the Etsy shop. I know I don't have a lot right now. Um, I had mentioned before, um, and I'll mention again, there is um, the painted rocks and the jewelry um, and probably the dragons as well, the dragonlings. Those are all going to come off the Etsy store um, in the very near future. What I've done now is I have a last chance section in my shop. So anything that's on its way out of the shop will go into the last, cha last chance section uh, prior to coming completely out of the shop. And excuse me, once those things are, uh, or actually currently, anything in the last chance section is 40% off. So definitely if you have been hemming and hawing and looking, at some of those painted rocks um, or the the Kumihimo bracelets or anything like that, take a look at that last chance section. It might be more in your price range now, um, but they will come out of the last chance section and out of the shop completely on um, March 15th. 
So you have until March 14th to get your orders placed. After that, that stuff is coming out, not to return to the shop. Uh, what will be coming to the shop are all of those um, vintage slash discontinued uh, patterns, uh, kits actually, um, that I showed in my buried treasure video a few weeks ago. Um, almost all of those are gonna go up into the shop. Um, and I will do, um, as I, I had mentioned this to you before, actually, now that I'm talking about non-picture stuff, let's go back here. <laughs> um, so I mentioned this before that I wanted to do um, a special discount code for you folks who actually watch my videos. Um, and I have done that now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna flash it up on the screen here. So this is the special discount code if you want to, uh, if you're interested in any of those discontinued kits. They're gonna go, when they go up in the shop, which should be, I'm hoping, I'm hoping by the end of today, but maybe not by the time this video goes live, because I don't want to hold this video until I get the stuff up. And it's one of the life things that I have to do is get all those things listed. And it's going to take a little while to get pictures and all that sort of stuff. But um, certainly by the end of this week, so by the 23rd, before the 23rd of February, hopefully by the end of Monday the 17th, um, when this is posted, um, all of those discontinued kits will be up in the, um, or all the discontinued kits that I'm gonna list will be up in the Etsy store. And you should use the code MP, the letter M for mislaid, P for pages, floss tube 820. Um, you should use that code to get 25% off of any of those kits. So that's only going to be for uh, for the discontinued kits, the ones uh, from the Buried Treasure episode um, of Floss Tube. So you won't be able to apply it to the entire shop. But as I said, anything in the last chance section is 40% off right now uh, for you, my viewers. Um, anything in the um, discontinued uh, kits will be 25% off if you use this code. Um, as far as I know, both of those codes... You, should, you shouldn't have a code for the 40% off. You should be able to just get that flat out. Um, use the code for the 25% off here. If you have any issues with those discounts working, just send me a message on Etsy. Um, Etsy link will be in the description below. So I didn't mean for all the Etsy to be quite so, um, I didn't mean to take up so much time with that. <laughs> I'm really not meaning for my floss tube to be an advertisement, um, but I did want to get that in there. I'm very excited about my store and my, my shop front and all that stuff, um, getting that up off the ground. So it's really big on my mind, which is why I keep talking about it. So it's not, it's not meant to be buy my stuff. It's just meant to be, this is what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, here's an update. So, so. anyway, um, let's talk about stash. Stash flash, stash and fiber flash, because um, I'm also gonna, I just got my knit crate. I got my knit crate, I think Thursday night. Oh, and it's so pretty. And um, yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's start with fabric, because y'all, y'all, you don't even know. Um, I have spent, I have spent far too much this month. And we're only halfway through February. And I just, I just got more floss on Sunday. <laughs> From Dave, from Kathy Davidson. Um, so yeah, so mm -hmm. I, I need to be on a no buy for a little bit because um, because yeah. So <laughs> the good news is I should not need any fabric. <laughs> I should not need any fabric for a good long time, um, except for maybe another piece of Easy Count twenty five count Lugana. <laughs> so uh, let's start with it. We're going to start with Misty Fabrics. I actually have three different dyers here represented today. Um, Misty, I get her Fabric of the Month. I'm considering joining um, Bistitch Me's Fabric of the Month as well, uh, but I have not made the plunge quite yet just because I don't know if I need two pieces of Fabric a month, though, you know, I'm saying that and I have more than 10 pieces of Fabric sitting here next to me. <laughs> But two pieces automatically a month would be too much. <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> so uh, Fabry, uh, Fabry, Misty, Fabric of the Month, is called Baby Lima Bean uh, for February. And this is hilarious. So apparently the next four, this and the next three, um, are all colored in a theme. <laughs> And the first one is Baby Lima Bean. So all I can imagine is that these are going to be Mandalorian themed. 
<laughs> somehow they're all going to relate to baby Yoda. Um, so this is the fabric. And unfortunately, everything's going to be washed out because once I came back, the sun has decided to shine its brightest. So this looks kind of like a, a sad yellow uh, on camera right now. It is actually um, a really nice kind of lima bean green. Maybe not even lima bean. It's greener than that. Lima beans can be kind of yellowed out of the can, so it's pretty. It looks it looks really pale yellow. I'm sad. The colors are going to be awful. I wish I had gotten a chance to do the the um, the fabrics before I left because the the light is not real great. And I just noticed this piece of fabric is kind of kind of wonky on the back. Look at that because it's um, it's folded flat on this edge, so. That, that meets right there, but it's uh, it's cut a little wonky there. It's not really going to be a big deal. Um, that's going to be a salvage edge anyway. Salvage, salvage, extra. Um, and this is an 18 by 27, so it's still plenty of fabric to work with. But I did just notice that that's that's a little strange. That's unusual for her fabrics. Anyway, so that is uh, that is baby lima bean. Um, not that you can tell. <laughs> I can't get the, okay, I'm going to cut all that out anyway. Okay, um, I also got, recently Misty did um, some bits bags. I actually got in on those. Um, these are all, I think, opal. There's some kind of Ada. Um, I think they're differing sizes of Ada. So this is a nice dark blue. Um, these are all from her, I want to say, Night Skies, when she did the Night Skies week. Um, but there's some really nice colors here. This is coming off really purple, but it's actually more, uh, um, it looks like a navy blue to me. But these are nice um, small pieces. I can make some uh, some Christmas ornaments out of them. I could, this is probably actually big enough. I could use one of these for um, my kitty, my unikitty that hates humans or doesn't believe in humans. Um, so this is, this is coming off not too bad. It's a little rosier um, in person it's, um, than it's coming off on camera. And this is sort of a fuchsia purple. So yeah, everything's getting super washed out. So I apologize. Um, I should maybe wait until next time to talk about fabrics, but I don't wanna, so. <laughs> the light's gonna be crappy no matter what I do. So let me just, I'm just restacking these because I was folding them individually as I went. And I'm like, that's, that's not good. That's not gonna work for me, so yeah put them back in their little stack. Um, so yeah, so those are some bits from a bit bag. I also got this really, this is a massive, massive piece. This is a piece of 28 count linen. And this is a, this is a half yard. Um, and the reason that I got this is because, and I don't think I'm going to completely, I'm not going to fold it, unfold it completely. Um, but there's half of the half yard. So this is a great big piece. Um, and I got this primarily thinking I might use it eventually for um, Words to Live By, the Tiny Modernist um, SAL from last year. Um, I know that it's, I, I believe it's a piece that's comparable to um, the Soya Stitch Along and the Linden Threads. I, I think it's like a, a 240, 250 by 250 kind of situation. Um, so it's great big. The funny thing is I got this massive piece of fabric and I'm actually considering um, doing that, doing words to live by uh, as a one over one. So I wouldn't actually need this gigantic massive piece of fabric for one over one, even though it is 28 count. But, uh, but yeah, I'm just not sure about the color. Um, so this is a really light blue. Um, and it's coming off bluer, bluer than I think it is. It's got a little bit more purple in it on camera, um, but it's a really nice light blue. So I'll need to, I need to get together some of the colors for the stitch along uh, for words to live by and see if I like them on this. I'm not sure if they'll be bright enough for that, but I think this is a similar color to what uh, Rolodex Stitches is using for her words to live by. So it might work. Um, so those are all my misty fabrics for this month anyway. So as you can see, that's uh, that's three different purchases <laughs> just from Misty. <laughs> um, and I actually slowed down on her stuff this month because I've been buying from other folks and because I have so much Misty fabric on hand. Um, 
you know, so I've been, I've been trying to spread the love a little bit. Um, so yeah, that was actually one of my smaller hauls. <laughs> um, next I have my first, my first haul from, uh, Bestitch Me. So Brandy, um, is the, uh, dyer behind Bestitch Me. Um, and that's B-E Stitch M-E. Uh, she's on Facebook and she does Friday night fight night, uh, with her fabrics, which is kind of cute. And, um, one of the things that's really awesome is that she does giveaways every single week. And we're not talking about, oh, I'll give away 5% off of this order. No, she gives away the last couple of weeks. She's been giving away massive amounts of patterns and a couple pieces of fabric. And, you know, she really does spread the love, um, from the sales that she gets. So she's, she's pretty fantastic. Two of the pieces that I'm going to show you are actually, um, fabrics that I won, uh, not by accident, but the fabrics that I won from her, uh, which I thought was pretty generous. Um, so this first piece, I'm trying to remember the name of the color. Um, it might be Twinkle. I think it's Twinkle. Uh, it's a piece of 18 count Ada, um, and it's a fairly small, it's a 15 by 18. And it's a really pretty purple into blue. Uh, not quite pastel but leaning in that direction. It's really pretty. I don't get a lot of Ada anymore, but this was a really gorgeous colorway. And I'm considering doing my, I don't, I don't believe in humans on here, um, but I haven't quite decided yet. It's way too bright for you to see these cards. Um, but yeah. Um, I also got a uh, twinkle in a piece of Jobelin, 32 count Jobelin. This is my first piece of Jobelin. Um, I have lots of Lugana, and some linen and stuff, but I think this is my first ever piece of Jobelin. And like I said, this is a similar colorway. We have pink on the, the one side going down to purple with blue in the middle. It's really pretty. This is a nice fabric too. It's sort of, um, if you've not had Jobelin before, to me it looks like a cross between linen and um, and Lugana. So it's thinner than this even, uh, even weave like, um, like Lugana does. Um, and this is, let's see, this next one is 32 count Lugana. And this is Starburst, Sun Sherbert. Okay, if y'all know what it is, y'all tell me. <laughs> I don't know who else might have gotten uh, these fabrics, but it's this really pretty, like, creamsicle kind of color. And it's not going to come out. Oh, I'm going to stop saying it's not coming out. Um, but it's beautiful pale oranges and yellows, pale but rich, um, and this is a nice good size piece. This is really big. So we've got yellows and oranges and peaches, peachy reds and that kind of stuff. Really nice big piece. Lots of color variation in there. I can't wait to figure out what I'm going to put on here. Um, I don't know what I'm going to put on here, but I will... I will find the perfect pattern. I have faith. I was actually having this conversation with a friend the other day because she was um, she was trying to figure out whether or not a certain um, piece of fabric she had would work with the the um, uh, the fancy floss that she had just bought, and she was doing a um, she was doing a floss toss, and I didn't think the two worked together. And she's like, "Well, if I don't use it for this, what will I use it for?" And I'm like, "You'll find a pattern. You'll find a chart." You know, you'll put it in your stash and one day this chart will pop out and you will look at that piece of fabric with that piece of, with that chart and you will know that the two belong together all along and it will be fantastic. I didn't put it exactly like that, but that's how I felt about it. <laughs> uh, this is the same colorway, but this is an 18 piece or this is an 18 count Ada. So again, it's a really nice large piece. Um, and we've got the same mixture of yellow and peach and orange and pinkies and all that sort of stuff. So it's a really nice, bright, sunny color um, that is not coming out because of the bright, bright sun today. And then now I've got the two pieces that I actually won for free. So this is fantastic. This is an 18 count Ada. This is an 18 by 21 piece. Um, and the color is called Sandstorm. So it's a nice neutral color. Um, it's got sort of, it looks really kind of, purpley lavendery on screen um, but it's got these sort of veins of grayish um, running through sort of a warm taupey kind of color so it's a nice neutral I don't have a lot of neutral so it's good to have some of those on hand so that was really nice and then 
I also got this piece. This is a freebie um, that I won from her. Uh, she was, granite was one of the colors for that week. And she asked me what size fabric I would like. And the kind, kind soul that she is, I asked for 40 count. She didn't have it on hand, so she dyed it for me. Completely for free, she dyed me this piece of fabric because I had won one of her giveaways. So um, I think that's above and beyond because probably, you know, myself, if I'd been in her position, I'd been like, I'm so sorry, I don't have 40 count, but I've got 36. How would that work? Or, you know, something like that because um, she's given me something for free. So she, she didn't have to dye a, a piece of fabric specifically for me, but she did. So this is 40 count linen. Um, this is, it's kind of scary, but <laughs> I'm a little scared of this fabric. It actually feels, it's so thin. It feels like paper almost. It feels like a really thick cardstock. Um, and it's funny. So I got, I wanted 40 count. The whole reason I wanted 40 count. So I saw these Plum Street samplers, these animal stack samplers. Um, I'll talk about them again later. Um, in some other floss tube, but I found these animal count, animal stack samplers, and there's this sort of neutrally rustic, not rustic, primitive type color that they're using, and I was like, what if I got those samplers and I stitch them one over one on 40 count, or what if I do whatever I'm doing on uh, one over one on 40 count? So for whatever reason, I've gotten into my head that I want to make tiny, 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 tiny cross stitches. Um, so I've got some 40 count <laughs> and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay. A couple more pieces of fabric. Like I said, <laughs> so that was Misty and then Bistitch Me. And now we're going to go through my dying for cross stitch uh, from Kathy Davidson. Um, so I have three pieces from Kathy and uh, let's see, which one do I want to show you first? So um, I got some really high count from Kathy as well, but not 40 count. I noticed after I decided to get obsessed with the really, really high count that maybe 40 count might be too high a count. So yeah, so what I've got here, I've got two pieces of 36 um, count linen. And then this other is, I think a Luke on, uh, it's a 28, oh, it's a linen. Okay, so I got all linen, that's strange. I normally don't buy linen. I did get linen because this time, because I knew it was a higher count. So this is a piece of 28 count linen. It's 17 by 26. And see, I'm wondering, because after I got that blue, I saw Kathy post these. Now this is a really nice, and I think this is a sparkly. Is this a, yeah, this is a sparkly. And it's, look at the modeling on this. How gorgeous is this? And it's a nice sort of silvery pewter gray. Um, it's really, really gorgeous. It's 28 count. So I'm not sure, but I'm wondering if one over one um, words to live by might fit on this because I think this would be a fantastic color for words to live by. It's not quite black. It's more of a warm gray but I'm still thinking maybe, maybe that could work. And if not that, if not that, then I have this 36 count linen that I also got from Kathy the same week um, in a very similar colorway. So this, um, it's coming off warmer on camera, but um, the other one, while it has a little bit of green in it, this is a cooler, I think it's a cooler gray than the other one, slightly, not much. So the other one has a little warmer tone and this one is cooler, I think, but they're both so gorgeous. I mean, look at the, look at that. How beautiful is that? It's really, really beautiful. I could not get over it. Um, in fact, I got a little greedy on them. <laughs> and that's the whole thing is I got three pieces of fabric from Kathy that was like, oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, one of those two, as much as I like that, that really light blue from, from Misty, um, these are just really, really, really nice. I love the, the patterning and stuff. And I think that might actually go better with, um, words to live by. So I'm going to have to do a floss sauce and we're going to have to see. And then the other piece of fabric I got from Kathy at Dying for Cross Stitch is this piece. This is another 36 piece of, um, of linen, but this is a nice dark purple purple reddish 
Like, it's really cool. I, again, I don't know what I'm going to use this for, but this color is just, I can't get over this color. I don't know why I'm in love with this color. And I don't know what I'll use it for, but something. Uh, and this is also a piece of opal, so it's it's got that shine to it. It gives it a little bit of a green hue, I find, that, that opal. And I think it's because the opal um, thread that runs through it is just slightly greenish. So yeah, so that's really nice. So that's that's all the dyed fabric that I bought. Um, it's not all the fabric I bought. <laughs> so um, I did get some. I've also gotten in some flosses from Kathy. I'll go through those in a minute because I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a floss flash or a fiber flash. Um, so I'll get to that in a minute. But lastly, um, hand dyed by Rolanda. I was having the worst time finding the 25 count uh, Easy Grid Lugana. And then all of a sudden, Hand Dye by Rolanda popped up, and there it was. So, Hand Dye by Rolanda, thank you so much. I also have from, some floss from her, so we're going to talk about those now. Um, so, yeah, I can't remember how big this piece of, of Easy Count is. Um, I'm going to have to measure it and see if I can get... I don't think I got a piece that's big enough for both of those Heaven and Earth designs I have. But if I did, then score for me. Um, if not, then I'll have to wait until uh, Hand Dye by Rolanda has more easy count again because uh, that's easier for me one two three stitch doesn't tend to keep it on hand I think um, and that's my my biggest source for stuff right now so okay so let's talk about fiber flash so like I said um, and I think I actually just bought this color again hmm, or maybe I'm misremembering anyway Kathy's dying for cross stitch look at these look at these oh my gosh I know I sound like Rolodex stitches right now, but look. Oh my gosh. So pretty. So these are almost like a, I, I keep thinking peacock in my head, even though they don't have the purples and stuff. I don't know. There's just something about it. I guess it's because it's got that blue to green kind of teal thing happening. It's really, really nice. I was so happy to get two, two skeins of that. And then I got, um, I got one skein of this beautiful orangey red is not coming up because it's it's too close to the camera pretty orangey red and i also got this blue green super nice and i have i think five or six more skeins coming to me from from this past saturday or sunday <laughs> because i got on there early enough right when she posted the floss that i was like i was able to go in and basically me please everything i wanted so i got one of each almost just about um and then from rolanda from Rolanda, I got three different colors as well, uh, partly because um, on Hand Dye by Rolanda on her Etsy page, if you get $35 worth of stuff, you get free shipping from Canada. So I think the fabric was like $17 or $18. I was like, well, that's an excuse to get some floss. So this is a pretty kind of magenta into dark purple. It's really nice. I think that's still available on her on her site. This is purple and gray into that like gorgeous blue. How nice is that? And then this is a nice dark purple with navy blue. Really gorgeous. So I'm super happy about that. So those are my flosses. I also, one last thing, I thought I was, I had picked this up before. Uh, So, as I mentioned, I got my, as I mentioned, I got my knit crate uh, earlier this week, and I'm super, super excited. So, let me open it for you. So, oh my gosh. So, this is, I'm still on the, the cool colorway. Um, I forget what they, the chill out colorway, because I like the cool colors. So this is a little bit of like purple and blue with this white. It's really, really pretty. And the the nifty, the extra nifty thing, I don't know why I'm showing it to you in the box. Um, you know, so we got these. So pretty. And the extra nifty this month is this really cool ceramic button. Look at that. I'm not sure what I'll use it for. I guess you could use it, you would normally use it like on a scarf or something to pin it together. 
Um, I think it's really, really cool. It's a nice, um, it's really pretty and it's got a nice weight to it. And the thing that I'm extra, extra excited about this month is that um, the patterns are for fingerless gloves. So um, I don't know if I'm brave enough to try the pattern for knitting because I'm not a good knitter, um, but I think I am gonna try the cross stitch, um, the cross stitch pattern for this. I think it's gonna be really, really awesome. So, um, and I think I mentioned before, you know, if you're, actually I haven't mentioned before, but if you want this colorway, you can still sign up for, um, for this month's Knit Crate. You can totally still get these colors. Because uh, I literally just got my shipment, and I think if you sign up before March 1st, then this is the colorway that you would get. Um, and I always keep the um, the referral code down in the bottom, and I keep it in that, you know, how to support my uh, my channel section, because uh, in in the interest of full disclosure, if you use my referral code, then um, Knit Crate does give me... Um, discounts towards future knit crate boxes. So um, no, not only would you get your very first knit crate box for $5, so you could get these two schemes for $5 for yourself, uh, but you're also helping me get future knit crates as well. So um, I haven't done a whole lot of uh, fiber stuff on my channel, but that doesn't mean that I wouldn't. I just realized I put the <laughs> just realized you <laughs> might have been able to see my address. I'll fix that. Um, but yeah, so not only um, you know are you getting really awesome yarn for yourself, but you're also helping support my channel and support my habit. And even though I haven't shown my fiber arts um, on my channel, I do love to crochet, and I'm still trying to learn to knit. So um, you know, any little bit helps. If you want to get knit crate for five dollars and and um, and support me a little bit too, then check out that link down below. So finally, okay, we're in the home stretch, folks. I know this has been really really long. Um, we're in the home stretch, but Finally, um, so I did, um, I had shown three different kits, um, full kits that I was going to give away, um, and two different kits. Anyway, <laughs> there were two, there were two full cross stitch kits and the diamond painting kit um, that I had shown, as well as um, I'm de-stashing this. So um, there were very few commenters. Uh, thank you to those who did comment. So there were three of you that were interested overall. Um, and rather than you know do a comment picker for three people, I've decided you're each gonna get something. Um, so um, Rebecca McClelland, uh, I believe you were most interested in this, um, getting the wolf kit. Um, so I've decided that you will get that. And then um, Kathy Mosher, you were interested in stitching the C's, and that was the only thing you were interested in, so you won that. And then um, Elizabeth Adams, you said you were interested in a whole bunch of stuff, so I want to send you something special just for you. Um, so you will also get a gift, you're just not gonna get one of these um, that I saw, unless you are interested in either the uh, Library Cat um, cross stitch kit or the wedding cross stitch kit I showed. If you're interested in either of those, um, then you're welcome to them. Otherwise, I will send you some kind of stitchy surprise or crafty surprise. Um, what I need for the three of you to do, if you would, um, uh, my email address is down in the link, uh, or it's down in the description. Uh, send me an email, tell me your name, uh, or actually put floss tube eight, tell me your name um, and which item you won. Uh, Elizabeth, just tell me, you know, what thing you're, if you're interested in one of those other two kits, that's totally fine. If you're interested in the surprise, just put surprise in the email and make sure you give me a good mailing address to send this to you. So uh, that's going to be about it for today, I think. So thank you so much to all of my subscribers. Uh, thank you so much to you three for commenting and being interested in, uh, in getting some of those gifts. There will be future gifts in the future, um, probably not until I hit 200 or 250 subscribers. Um, I'll do another thank you. By that point, I will probably have so much fabric that I will have to give away some fabric. So, so we'll see how that goes. But Anyway, in the meantime, uh, I hope you're all enjoying your flossy goodness, your stitchy goodness, your whatever crafty stuff that you do, and that you're having a great day, and uh, I will see you next time. Have a good one.